is the Glass Cannon Network. It's Friday. You know what that means. It's time for chaos. We are back with more of uh, Call of Cthulhu's. Hold on. Ah, massive Neolithotep. Don't look at that cover. How dare you look at that cover? It's loaded with spoilers. <laughs> Who am I yelling at? Um, we're going to have some fun tonight. But first, we're going to talk about something very, very important. What is one food? You refuse to eat. I'm gonna start with you, Robert. Refuse to eat. Um, it's cliche to say it, but uh, cilantro is the devil's herb. Uh, it doesn't contribute anything uh, at all to any food that it's put upon. Do you have that genetic uh, disposition that makes it taste like dish soap? I do, but I also feel like that's a crutch. Like, mm -hmm. if you don't like something, that's your fucking genetic disposition. Like, if that's <laughs> just your take on whatever it is. Like, oh, yeah, I love, uh, you know, I love Starship Troopers. I'm genetically disposed to love Starship Troopers. <laughs> like, so, yeah, I guess you could say, yeah, it doesn't taste good to me. Um, and I often, it just shows up in everything. I just got to kind of deal with it. So if someone handed you fresh made guacamole that was loaded with cilantro, you yeah, would just I, I, I got to try to do like the, I do a dex check to see if I can successfully scoop around uh, the tiny green bits of hell. Um, I don't think anyone is judging you as harshly about this uh, more than Nora, who's just giving you the dirty, <laughs> like yeah, cilantro she, is she her cousin, the, hand the way the she's gym. looking at his How dare you? <laughs> You big cilantro fan, Nora? As a child, I did not understand it, but that's also probably because I grew up in New York as a child. When I moved to LA, suddenly I'm like, oh, I get what this is, and I love it. Put it in all of my Mexican food. Um, yes. I mean, I guess culinarily speaking, I, I am still a child. So I, that, that, that makes sense. I think that tracks. Although I have some controversial feelings, so it's okay. I'm, I'm not going to judge Marshall. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> To put your face, tell that to your face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's a food you you refuse to eat? Or are you a picky eater? I mm, I would say I am not the most picky, but I do have some things, and I do have a very controversial thing, especially living in L.A. Oh. And I will just say right now, for the record, for everybody listening, <laughs> fuck kale. Fuck all of kale. Whoa. I don't want it in anything. Whoa. Do not put it in anything. It is literally yes. a Brillo yes. pad that yes. goes through your digestive system. That's the point. Yeah. I fucking hate. No. <laughs> Clean the pipes. Mm, no. Scour don't eat it. Out. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Huge. It tastes like garbage. Mm -hmm. The texture is garbage. Mm -hmm. And my insides hate me after eating it. No. Wow. Will have, not. Have you ever had creamed kale? It's, Why would I do that to myself, Troy? Why? Just got to add a little milk and cheese in there. That's the, the cure-all for gross oh. food. No. Um, uh, it seems like, Kate, you agree with this kale hate. Well, yeah, because spinach is way better. So, like, why even yeah. bother with kale when spinach is right there? Mm. And it's better. Well, because spinach, I feel like, sh it, it shrinks down. You like, yeah, so you, you can you're have cooking like with it, and you're like, this is all I, I mean, this is plenty of spinach. And then you cook <laughs> it for three minutes, and it's gone. But you Does can it have do a that whole weird bag. And Does it eat? do that weird thing to anybody else's teeth? Spinach? Get stuck in it? <laughs> right. No. That weird oh. thing where it gets stuck? Like it feels like your enamel has been scraped completely off of your teeth no, when you eat it. Sounds like a me. genetic thing. That is another <laughs> genetic thing. <laughs> spinach <laughs> you eat it. Yeah. I love spinach, but it does that to me, especially if huh. it's raw. Really? <laughs> I uh, still love it. Okay, mm -hmm. so besides kale, what's something else you just refuse to so, eat? I bet you you seem like a picky eater, I bet. I'm not like a picky eater. Like I'll try a lot of stuff. Oh, that's but good. But like I, I need to, I have a lot of rules. No, oh, here we go. Uh, <laughs> I need to eat everything in like a certain order mm -hmm. and maybe not touching. And if it smells weird at any point, it's garbage. It can't have little holes in it. <laughs> I won't eat 
Shellfish, like if the holes are too close together, it freaks me out. Shellfish is too squishy. Um, Which holes are we yeah, talking What holes are we talking Swiss cheese? <laughs> or? Right, right, you like Swiss sometimes cheese. mushrooms <laughs> have like like lines that are close together or mm-hmm. like texture holes or like if something Porous. is foamy mm-hmm. and there's like a foam on top of it or something and it's got holes. So, foamy, like, foamy holes. Yeah, look at it. All right. So you, it really just comes down to food with holes is your... <laughs> Is your <laughs> yeah. your taboo. And it needs to be eaten in a certain order in, a certain in order, its entirety yes. before I move on to the next thing. Yeah. Horrible. I used to be that way. It's it's the curse of the Virgo. We're we're, yes. we're very sick. Um yeah. <laughs> Ross, what about you? Are you uh do you eat? I'm sitting here. You eat? I'm li- <laughs> <laughs> Hey bro. <laughs> you even eat? Do you eat just uh-huh. protein shakes all day? <laughs> You eat, bro? Um, <laughs> yeah, bro. Uh, I eat. Um, I'm sitting here. I'm listening to all of this, all of this cilantro hate, this kale prejudice, this with some tri- trypophobic eating of like no, no holes allowed. And I and I and to that I say I respect all of your opinions and tastes. And I I, I I'm racking my brain. Like I'm really, I'll I'll, I'll eat. Anything, dog. Mm-hmm. Put it put it on a plate. I'll go for it. Mm. I don't even care. Wow. I'm I'm twisted, bro. I'll, I'll eat anything. <laughs> anything. <laughs> I don't care if it's got holes, cilantro, kale, serve it up. The more holes, the more cilantro, the better. Yeah. Um, I'm fine with that. I'm like, I feel like the, 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 the where I get dicey is like moral ground food. Like I'm I'm very like I I'm not so much into like things like veal mm-hmm. or or stuff like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. I uh I remember finding out about veal, and that was a sad day. So I finished my veal cheeks, and then I said, never again! I feel like veal is on the downswing. I feel like it's real gauche at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It feels like no one's really serving it. I don't really see it a lot. I don't know. As a kid, weren't you eating veal like every week, though? Nobody thought anything of it. Oh, like, all the did, time! Because our parents oh, didn't yeah. have the internet. They didn't know what the hell we were doing. They were famous. Um, yeah, we're eating foie gras stuffed veal, veal breakfast yeah. lunch veal, and dinner. like rich people? I don't understand. My we mother were, was obsessed with uh, Julia Child. Oh. So <laughs> every mm. meal was yeah. some sort of, like, even though we'd be eating it in front of the TV during, like, you know, TGIF, it was still, like, a three-course meal with a candle <laughs> in the oh my living God. room. Yeah. My mom would, like, serve us, like, little carrot sticks, and we'd have to have a bowl of water next to it because we would have to dip the carrot sticks in water, and my brother would eat everything upside down. So we didn't have veal. Let's talk yeah, about this carrot stick this, this dipping. This was not a difficult. Uh, <laughs> this was not a difficult thing to keep off the menu when it was never served. Like, like, he was he was upside like he was inverted. Your brother was the brother <laughs> like he did, he the carrots <laughs> upside down. Does he have soft teeth. Oh, Why is he better. dipping his vegetables in water? Yeah. Yeah. It gets better. Is, he would sit at the mon- dining room table, up? and he would put putting his t shirt over his head like cornholio. And he'd take oh. his food and he'd flip it upside down like pizza, pop tarts, like anything, and eat it like that. Sorry, okay. Alex, to call you out like this, but it's yeah, a good it's better story. Better than me Sorry, picturing Alex, him hanging hurt. off a trapeze <laughs> and eating, which is where I went. Yeah. For me, I'm yeah, I'm I not was picky. Like lining. Yeah, yeah I, I, I still don't understand the dipping in water, but I uh, I'm not picky. I just I, I, the only thing I really don't like is spaghetti squash because I I had mm. it once and got violently ill, and so now I just refuse to even eat it again. Even though I'm pretty sure it had nothing to do with the spaghetti squash, I'm just like I'll just have spaghetti. I don't need. F- fake spaghetti i'll just have the real thing mm-hmm. um, you have all the things i don't think you're missing out on much like i i like a spaghetti squash okay if it's there but it's not something i'm gonna go for so i i think of all the things you could have gotten sick off of like that could have been far worse yeah i also love thick, that it, it was actual I spaghetti i think it would have been really sad yeah <laughs> and i love that in kate's mind i'm now like growing up like <laughs> eating like like veal veal suets and like um, and uh, foie gras under aspic with my little Buster Brown hat and playing on my harpsichord and I'm going to do nothing to disabuse her of that notion. Well, I mean, no. it's probably because my family like we ate our food like idiots with shirts on our head and upside down. So my mom's like, "We're not feeding you veal. Here's macaroni right. and chicken nuggets and carrots with water on the side. You weirdos." Yeah. A veal parmesan was just like a meatball sub growing up, it was, but it really wasn't fancy. Uh, veal yeah. cheeks, we didn't have that till later, but uh, yeah, veal. Don't eat veal. It's just, it's, not, it's what's the point? Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, just eat chicken and beef and other animals that are no longer babies. Um, 
we are going to have some fun tonight, and uh, we're, we're, we're starting the show with a combat, which is pretty wild. Combat makes me nervous in Call of Cthulhu, because I really like these characters. We're just starting to get to know them. It's only been a, a couple weeks. I'm rooting for you, but it's, it's not really up to me. Um, before I forget, though, let's uh, let's kick off the show with the old luck roll. Let's see if uh, if you're feeling lucky tonight. Um, remember, you've got to fail this roll, and if you fail, if you roll higher than your current luck score, you will get uh, a d10's worth back. Right. Spend that luck. Oh, oh, that's so rude. <gasps> Eighty-one, <laughs> baby. Eighty-one. Holy smoke! I beat I beat it by two two points. Ooh, beautiful. Nice. Uh, Kate, I'm seeing a sour. I have a fifty-one luck. I rolled a fifty. Oh, <gasps> oh, brutal! That's and one good. of the things you can't spend luck on is your luck roll. <laughs> uh, so close, Rob. How did you do? Um, I did not make it by a lot. Okay, uh, so Nora and Ross, go ahead and add a D10 back to your uh, luck. Eight. Seems as if they're nice. the lucky ones this evening. Although, if my character dies, I'm just going to say right now. Every character that I have that comes back is going to be more obnoxious than the last. <laughs> nice. So excited. Is that a threat? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is a promise. Uh, yes. <laughs> Bring it on. Uh, we have a friend who... Uh, Every time the character died, he would just bring back his brother. And so he would be like the second, and then the third, and then the fourth, and then the fifth. Uh, and so by the end of his, their childhood, like it was up to his the 15th, so-and-so the 15th. Um, all right. Another thing I'm going to have you roll is uh, when you come out of the tent and see these monstrosities with huge mouths, rings of teeth, like a lamprey eel. The same uh, woman and child you saw when you were coming over to these islands on Lake Titicaca, you got a sense that they were staring at you. We're like, ah, nothing we can do about it. We're heading to see this old wise woman. They're now here, along with what looks like a ton of Karisiri, possibly, killing everyone in the village. There's bodies everywhere, gaping holes on their chests. And now the four of you are confronted with these two. Was it a woman and a child? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it was. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the first visual thing I... representation of all that Kate hates about food. Right, just kale, <laughs> cilantro, <laughs> stick it out. I would never eat one of these, let me tell you right now. <laughs> Unless I had a bowl of water to dip it in, <laughs> then I would. <laughs> just you know, soften it up. It's, uh, it's crucial. Seeing this horror provokes a sanity roll. Give me a, oh, give no. me a good old-fashioned sand roll. Oh, okay. Here we go. Um, now, uh, and Troy, just just to refresh everyone's memory, I, I Von Villiers is still currently undergoing the effects of altitude sickness, but, but that affects all physical roles, right? So right. The, so that won't affect this uh, sanity roll. It won't affect the sanity roll. It'll affect anything you want to do in say uh, combat, for oh. example, uh, throwing Good. a table at these uh, things, uh, swinging a machete, shooting a gun. Uh, you're you're heady from the change in altitude here in the. Indian Highlands. Um, How would everybody do? Any fails? So we're trying to roll under our current sanity, not the full thing. Yeah, right under on. your current. Yeah, make sure you're looking at the current. Oh, I'm good. I passed. I was prepared for this. I've got bad news. <laughs> oh, no. no. <laughs> I rolled an 86. Oh, <laughs> oh Over uh, 31. No, no. Whoa, you don't have a lot of sanity. I've been through a lot. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that is a failure. Um, so you were going to give yourself a roll of d6. That is how much sanity damage you're going to take. Very well. Ooh. Four sanity points. Okay, you're fine. Had you rolled five, um, then you you uh, you roll an intelligence check to see if you fully understand what's happening, and that's a check you actually want to fail because should you succeed on that check, uh, the full brunt of this horrible reality hitting you uh, sends you into a spiral where uh, something random and awful happens. But instead, you just go from 31 to now 27 sanity. Um, should you lose uh, six uh, in one day, I think, 
um, who have a chance to go insane as well. So uh, a, a character that's already on the brink is just slipping further and further away. Am I? I believe when you woke up, Vaughn and Feyruz grabbed their guns and came to the tent, whereas Carter and Margot grabbed their shiny new machetes. Machete up. That they bought at the Army-Navy store in Lima. Um, and so, assuming that you have your guns in hand, uh, you'll get a plus 50 to your initiative just for this first round. One thing we did incorrectly in the first fight, and we're, you know, we're, we're, we're learning as we go, is that uh, when your gun's drawn, it gives you just a bonus to that first round because you're ready to attack. Um, but next round, you go back to your normal deck score. So... All that said, let's take a look at the old dex order here. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> Feyruz, you're going to be up to a 105, which means you will go first, followed by uh, Carter. No, Carter doesn't have, excuse me, followed by Vaughn uh, at a 90, uh, and then Margot, and then the creatures. What do you guys want to do? Feyruz. All right, so a couple of questions. How far away are the, presumably what we saw earlier as that grandmother and child combo that we now know are Kari Siri? Yeah, so the the mother and this, this kid can't be more than 10, 11 years old. Uh, they are about, I'd say, 10 feet away from you. Uh, the woman is coming closer to uh, you and Margot because I believe the two of you were sharing a hut, whereas the uh, child, clearly transformed child, uh, is coming towards Vaughn and Carter. All right, well, that's a lot closer than I thought that mm -hmm. they were at. Um, I will not spend this round um, trying to aim. I think I'm just going to fire at the older woman in this duo. And, and there's this, so far as we know right now, it's just those two, or are there more? There are more all over the camp, but they are uh, engaged in killing everyone you see bodies everywhere you actually see some bodies lying on the ground that have these mouths like the creatures that are attacking you if they are indeed kari siri you see that some of the villagers have fought back and uh at least incapacitated them but if what the professor told you is true uh when you went and visited him in the hospital uh they're hard to kill yeah, they gotta be decapitated, right? Dismembered, even decapitated, I think he said, like, they'll still come after you. Dismembered or burned. Uh, but right now, okay. these two are the ones that are on you, whereas it's just uh, a pandemonium throughout the right. rest of the village. Uh, I got three rounds. I think for, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna shoot one at this, uh, you know what? Let's no, no. We're gonna go high stakes. I'm gonna do full three, three shots at this older, the older one. You're gonna the, unload the clip send on a this message. lady. All right. Yeah. So high when stakes. You, when you go, go when you've it. got a, you've got a 22 automatic. When you, if you're gonna fire off all three shots, two things need to happen. You're gonna take a penalty tie on okay. each attack, which means the lower roll is the one that's gonna count. Okay. Um, and then next round, if you want to use your gun again at all in this combat, you have to spend a round to reload it. Um, but you could like move away and go hide in the tent while you reload. You have those options, but your uh, your main action would have cool. to be a reload. Or you could just throw the gun to the ground and start, <laughs> get over here, you son of a gun. <laughs> uh, all right, so give me your first roll and take the lower of two rolls, but you're just rolling the tens twice when you have a penalty die. With the tens, it's not a, it's, okay. The double digit number, not the single digit number. I rolled a five as the lowest one. I rolled a 10 and a five. Okay, so Ooh. you need to take the worst one though, which okay, is the, five. the higher, right? Oh. You know what I mean? Because you, you, it's a penalty, you know what I mean? So lower okay. is better. You need, you take the higher number, the worst number. Gotcha, so I, okay, so 10. You rolled a five and a 10? Yeah. All right, that is a hit. Uh, roll damage. What is the damage for your handgun? It is a it is a one d six. All believe. right, let's see what you got. Six. Yes. Whoa. Six max 
damage. All right, so just boom. It doesn't even dodge out of the way or try to duck for cover. It just is advancing on you as its mouth looks like it's widening as it does. So take your second shot. Again, take the the worst roll, the worst right. of two rolls. I rolled a nine and a six. But You're rolling a D100, right? Not a D20? No, you told me to roll. I thought it was a D10. No, you're still rolling the D100. Oh. <laughs> it's so funny. I can't explain the penalty die very I well. I thought, okay. I yeah. am sorry. So I you're, thought. You're basically rolling two D100s and taking the worst number, uh, but you're not okay. rolling the single digit one. Got you, got you, got you. Okay, you know so I'll, I mean? me, I'll do this again. I'll do this again. Yeah, well, let's go. The whole it's thing over alive. again. You gotta keep that six thing over again. <laughs> All right, so I rolled a two and I rolled a 25. All right, is the 25 a success? Uh, is this against, this is against my brawl? This is against your firearms. Against my firearms, so against, let me see. Okay, I'm sorry, I was so confused in the beginning nope. and I was like, coming in hot. All right, let's, uh, let's look for the firearms. So my firearms is a, where the heck is it? Oh, it should be at the top of. I should be right. looking, I'm just, I'm okay, just okay, waiting so for you when I have your character under, I should roll under a 50. Under a 50, okay. So I, this is, that's a success. That's a success. So just uh, keep, I'll keep the six points of damage. Okay. But just to uh, over clarify again, as you have two more attacks here, yeah. you don't roll the the single digit one twice. Do you know what I mean? So you yeah. wouldn't have got a two and a 25. You would have had just the second number. So let's say, I rolled, t <laughs> like you just take like the single number and you take uh -huh. two uh, percentile dies and roll it and take the lower. So you either roll a 77 and a 37 or a 25 and a 55. Like okay. that second number is always gonna be the same because you're not rolling that one twice. Do you know what I mean? Oh, okay, so it's the, the hundreds one is the only one I'm rolling twice. Yes, and I keep then saying this, the, the tens, tens one the is the same, it's just one ten. Okay, yes. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, so for the second one, Oh, <clears throat> so either a ninety-one or a thirty-one. So that's what you're that's talking about. It's a ninety-one. Yes. Now, now, All right. now, now we get. It. And when you sometimes you get a bonus die and you get to take the better one. In this case, that's just a straight up miss. But All still right. took six points of damage and you got one more attack. And I got one more. All right. Okay, <laughs> seventy-four uh, or a fourteen. So no, I did not succeed on that one. This is the uh, the the risk reward here of yes. uh, unloading the clip, but you still did do uh, significant damage to this thing. And again, it just took a hit, and like the Terminator, it just keeps advancing on you. And now, now do I have any movement? Yes. In this? Yes. You want to move right up to it and give it a big kiss. Heck no, I want to hide behind something. Okay, uh, uh, there's a body on the ground nearby. You can just... Cool, no. I'll, I'm uh, fine. <laughs> no, there's plenty of clothes. Maybe it'll think you're in the body. There's, there's tables and debris everywhere. Uh, you could easily hide behind something. Yeah, there's like an upturned table. Uh, I'll go ahead and... Yeah, you feel pretty confident that. that it'll kill Margo now and you'll be <laughs> fine. Uh, <laughs> it's such a good hiding space. Oh, God. <laughs> the, the very slow uh, Margo. Uh, actually, no, Margo, you got an 80 dex. You, you got a pretty good dex. But where Vaughn had a gun out, Vaughn will go first. Vaughn, right. the child, is the <gasps> one that's advancing on you. No wonder your sanity's slipping. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, um, reeling from that shock and also reeling from the effects of the thin, thin air at this altitude, um, Vaughn uh, levels his uh, 32 caliber pistol at the eel-like face of this child. Um, that's no child. <laughs> um, but uh, because of the sickness, I'm, I'm in the same predicament. I've got to roll at a disadvantage, correct? Right, yeah. So you're going to take one shot, and you have the same disadvantage. Wow, that little... All, any of you could have failed for that altitude sickness, um, but oh. the timing of this is really shitty. Oh, this might get us into something... Okay, no, no. I, I So uh, with that... I could have made it if my other roll hadn't been a 95. No. Oh, and what is your firearm skill? My firearm, my, well, I have many firearm skills because I, uh, like I have a handgun skill. I have a separate rifle skill. Ah, okay. Um, I have, and then, and then there are other firearm skills in addition to those. 
but the handgun skill is actually quite low. It's only, it's only 20. So Okay, so had you rolled a 96, uh, where your handgun skill is under 50, that would have been a fumble, yeah. uh, which is just like, let the GM destroy your life, um, or the keeper, rather, but instead, right on the cusp with a 95. So you hear, boom, 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 from Feyruz, and then boom, fawn, and only one of these creatures has been hit with one single bullet. Margo... You see Feyruz duck behind a table, a burning table. Uh, and and, uh, and Vaughn runs back to the hut where they were sleeping. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. And shuts the flap. Carter just does like a double take as he runs by. He's like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Margo Sour, Fraulein, Fraulein Sour. Fraulein. What, what do you do here with your machete? So I see Feyruz shoot at this mom three times <laughs> and it doesn't really react and sh- she's out now. It hit her. You definitely see a hit like there's blood coming out um, but it's not dead. Or oh, lame, I mean like Feyruz Fe- like is out. Yeah, Feyruz is out. <laughs> but the monster didn't seem to react and do I think that they move pretty slowly? Because I'm um, thinking like do I want to brace for when they come at me? Oh, that just that's interesting. You want to maybe wait until they get close to you and then swing at it. You could also just walk up to it and swing. Yeah. Um, it's hard to it's hard to see. They, they if you look around camp, uh, they're moving in at all different speeds. So you have no reason to believe they're going to come slow. Um, and it was just hit with a bullet. Um, so what are you thinking? Do you want, are you going to take a swing at it? Is that your ultimate goal here? And it's just a matter of swinging now or waiting until it advances on you? So I'd have to walk up to it and swing, and then that's my turn. Yeah. I'm going to wait for it to come to me so that I can swing and run if okay. needed. <laughs> I like that. That's actually, that's really, really smart. All right, so you can wait. You hold your turn. I'm not 100% sure how holding works. I think you just go when you're ready, and... Uh, so we will move on to the creatures. So the first one does indeed move up to you. And I wonder which action resolves first, yours or its. I would think its does. Uh, so it is going to try and grab you. It's a um, maneuver. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you're standing there with your machete and the woman, just blood pouring out of a bullet wound, uh, comes up and it just tries to uh, like grab you. So this is a maneuver um, and we resolve a maneuver like fight back, um, but you're gonna roll your, I guess you have an option. You can roll dodge and if we both get the same success, it won't grab you. Or you can try to fight back and if we both get the same success, it will grab you. However, if you get a higher success, you'll get to slice it with your machete, and then it's your turn, if you want, to be able to slice it again. So high risk, high reward, if you choose to fight back, you might just want to dodge it. What does Margo do? Is dodge dexterity? Dodge is its own skill, that dodge you probably have a pretty oh, okay. decent dodge. Yeah, I have a little bit better dodge than brawl. Um, Oh God. It's tense. Uh, So I'm trying to think of what she would do. She's waiting because she doesn't want to, she wants to kill it and she knows she's supposed to kill it. So I Mm -hmm. think I'm just going to try to fight it and we're going to see if she dies right now. All right, (laughs) roll. uh, So then you're going to roll with your knife and it's going to be an opposed roll against my attempt to grab you. And we will compare successes. See what happens. So sweaty. Okay, here we go. (laughs) <laughs> oh no 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 she's walking away oh <laughs> would you get Troy? <laughs> I had a regular success by one point I got a 95 over 30 <laughs> <laughs> you mean you didn't have a hundred dodge all right so cheapers king all right so this thing comes up to you and just grabs. And as it grabs you, you see it's just like pulling you towards it and its mouth is going right for your mouth. And you think of the professor and you think, holy shit, is it gonna do to me? What it did to the professor? 
Uh, and now it's your turn. So oh, cool. I'm going to tell you what your options are here. You are grabbed. If you want to try to escape the grab, I believe it's a strength check. That's um, No, you don't have to do that. Uh, it, yeah, it's a strength opposed roll, the strength of the creature and your strength. Uh, so same thing, better success uh, wins. Uh, higher success wins. Same six, if, if they both roll the same success, who's ever stronger wins for an opposed strength check. What is your strength? 35. Yeah, and you feel like this thing is really, really strong. Yeah. So maybe trying to escape isn't the right move here. Um, But that means you and your friends need to kill it before it comes back around to its turn. What do you want to do? Half the friends who ran away. Yes. (laughs) So So, (laughs) who created some distance. Maneuvers. I can escape. I'm trying to look at this tree you sent us. And it doesn't list maneuvers. Yeah, because a maneuver is like, you tell me what you want to do, and we resolve it uh, based on your imagination. So I feel like I can't um, escape, but can I just, like, I have my machete still in my hand. Can I just try to, like, jab it? (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Um... I, I think there, <laughs> I, I hate to do this to you, but I'm gonna say because it's grabbing you to try and swing at it, you're gonna take a penalty die because it's a really uh, tough, uh, a tough swing. You're trying to, you're trying to use the force of your body to come up, but it's got its, 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 its uh, claws on you. Um, so you're gonna have to take a penalty die. Okay, I don't, uh, I don't think that you hate that. I think they're having a great time. I'm <laughs> rooting for you guys. It's, uh, it's early on the show, um, but. <laughs> It's not gonna. It's not gonna attempt to dodge because it's it's trying to, it's trying to suck your face. Um, so two so, of the hundreds, one ten. Yeah. And you just need a success, and you will hit. <laughs> um. Whoa! Awesome! I did it. I got a ten and a twenty on the hundreds, and then a nine. So I definitely got under my thirty for a brawl. Oh, you got mm. just under your thirty. Yeah. Twenty nine <laughs> under thirty. All right, that's a successful hit. What is the damage for the machete? It's a, I don't want to say it wrong, it's a 1d8 plus my db, which I don't have, because my build is zero. Yes, you have no db, but it's 1d8? Yeah, I got a machete! All right, and you've already uh, had, it's already taken six points of damage. Go ahead and roll that d8. Oh, God. A solid two. Maybe I had a little trouble there. Okay, yeah, you were trying to get that up under the chin and you just like scrape into its chest and its chest opens up and and intestine starts leaking out. Uh, All right, it's now been hit twice, but it still has you in its grasp. The other one goes to attack Carter and it's the same thing. It's gonna try and grab you, Carter, the child. Now its build is one less than yours. I'm assuming you have a build of one. Yeah. All right. This one will say only has a bi- it has a build of zero, uh, and so it's going to take a penalty die to try and grab you. But what do you okay. want to do? Do you want to dodge or fight back, or something uh, else? Um. Well, what I would love to do is uh, well, not. I don't think he's loving it, but uh, is help out Margo. So is there a way to sort of like? Like, yeah, I guess do- if I dodge it, is there like a penalty that comes after that? I can't remember. No, dodge, like you just need a, the to match successes and you're able to successfully dodge. And then you could spend your round going over there and trying to get that thing off. Okay. Um, so dodge is probably the safest bet for you to go and- All right, let's uh, do that. Hit Mar- go after Margo. Okay, um, so I'm gonna roll with a penalty die and you're gonna roll your dodge and we'll compare successes. Oh, I should have checked what my dodge was before this, because it's real low. <laughs> Carter's not the most dexterous. Okay. I failed. Okay. Um, so I, you just need a successful dodge, and you'll get out of the way. I did not. Uh, I did not roll under a twenty. Was what. I needed to roll. What is your dodge? Uh, but we both failed. So it goes to grab you, and, you know, in terms of the narrative, you you sidestep it. You don't quite dodge, but you get out of the way. Yeah, Carter's like, get, oh, you, uh, gross, you, you, you. <laughs> And now it's your turn. Okay, so is there, um, 
I know we're sort of like outside in this village. Are there any like lit torches anywhere? No, yeah, absolutely. Like stuck um, in the ground? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's okay. like one of those tiki torches. Okay, yeah. So I'd love to, uh, like just from Home Depot with the, with yeah. the little tiny Still got the tags on <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Carter wants to, uh, you know, he sees he sees a torch along the way to Margo, so he starts running, grabs it, and wants to hit the... Just like swing this torch at he would the love thing. To, he would love to like spear it into the a gaping maw of this thing. All right, so you're going to aim right for the face. All right, so that is going to be a, a brawl action. Um, and it sees the fire, and I'm going to say that's enough for it to try and fight back. Okay. Um, so the good news is it's going to release Margot as it does so uh, to try and fight back. The bad news is um, if I roll a higher success, it's going to punch you in the face. Let's do it. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead and roll your brawl. Oh, motherfucker. Uh, I, I needed to roll under a 70, and I got a 78. Well, I failed as well, so uh, no result, wow. which is still not great for you guys because you no. need to get rid of these things. Um, I'm just saying, is this an instance where he could use luck? Oh, how close were you? Hello. Just eight, eight points, points, right? Hey. Eight points? Yeah, well, spend that luck. Why would need to, so I need to get it to, to just under, or I can match it? You can match it. Okay, you so match yeah, it or go. Okay, so spend those eight points of luck, and that is a success. Oh, thank you, Ross. Um, Great call. I'm gonna say, give me a D8 worth of damage because it's a, it's a flame, and you're sticking it right in the mouth. Mm -hmm. Let me just go ahead and sort through these things that I didn't prep ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta okay. stick it. It releases Margo, and it just tries to claw at you, and it misses. Okay, and I did four on your side. Four points of damage. All right, so uh, it's taken twelve points of damage, and it's still up. Oh my god! Carter's like, get off of my newish friend. <laughs> <laughs> we now go to round two. And Vaughn and Feyruz will no longer get their bonuses um, that they had for having a readied firearm. And also, Feyruz's clip has been emptied. But Margot, you are the most dexterous one here, so you go first. Um, Carter just saved your life. Did it? Did it like walk far away from me? Do I have to like approach it again, or is it still kind of in reach? It's within reach for you to swing. Does it look like it's about to go down, maybe? It does, it looks pretty rough. Now obviously, killing it is a whole different matter, but you see incapacitated creatures like this on the ground, so you figure, just get it on the ground, get that one on the ground, then we can deal with the dismemberment and burning. Going for it, I'm gonna go for a swipe with my machete. Okay, and it's gonna fight back. I should let you know, that's like the default mode for creatures, is like fight back, they very rarely dodge, um, so. It's gonna try and fight back okay. by clawing your face. How'd you do? Uh, I failed. I got a 53 over 30 brawl. 53 over 30 brawl. Okay, and uh, I failed as well. So, yes. oh man. Okay. No result. Uh, and that's a lot of luck to spend to try and turn that into a success. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, I believe it is, yes, oh, it is now I'm, the creature's turn. I'm gonna move away from it a bit, as much as I can. Create some distance, you're gonna yeah. go over where Feyruz is or go over in the direction of Carter? Yeah, and, she seems uh, safe. I'm gonna go up there and be like, what did you do, where did you go? Where, where, where did you go, you just left me out there? And then I see she's fixing her, reloading her gun, so maybe I can chill out a bit. I had to reload the, the Choice at the table was on fire, so we're gonna stick with that. And it's gonna protect us. Oh, it just, just makes sense. Stay near the fire. Yes. It's very warm, hiding behind this burning table. Mm -hmm. Carter abandoned yet again. Uh, <laughs> does a triple take this time of just like, what is why? <laughs> uh, all right, it's both the creatures turn. One has sustained heavy damage. One has not sustained. Uh, really any damage um so the one that was holding margot will go in the direction of where margot and feruz are uh and it's going to attempt to grab one of you and i will determine it randomly uh one to 50 margot 51 to 100 feruz 42 it's got a crush on you margot uh. it is going to attempt to grab 
What do you want to do? Fight back? Didn't go so well last time. Or just try and dodge? Um, definitely dodge, I feel like, is in character uh, okay. for the moment. Yeah, you're, so it's all happening at the same time. You're running away and it's chasing you. Will it just get out of your grasp? Roll your dodge. I will right. roll my grab. I got double zero and a six, and I never remember what double zero means. Uh, that is, if it's with a six, that means you rolled a six. Oh, I dodge. Right? I, I super succeed. You My absolutely super succeed. And I rolled a 100, <gasps> which is a fumble. And so what I'm going to say is, as it goes to grab you, it and you uh, slip out of the way, it falls into the burning table that Feyruz was hiding behind. Yes. And it you starts, just, ah, ah, and you see its mouth wide open. It just starts uh, kind of... Uh, What's this word? What is the word for this? Flailing? Flail? Flailing? Flailing. Dancing. Yeah. Like it starts flailing in the fire. Uh, uh, dancing dancing in a really cool way. It's really it's really <laughs> yeah. getting into it. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it looks like it has been incapacitated from that fumble, a 100. I thought it was like, did I roll a Dope. one? Nope, three zeros. The other one goes to try and grab Carter. Carter, do you want to dodge or fight back? I'm going to fight back this time. Okay. Bold move. Going to punch it? Let's find out. I mean, my my brawl is much better than my dodge, so. Okay. I got a 34 under 70. So that's a hard success, right? Um, yeah, yeah, just under hard success. And I also, also rolled a hard success, uh, which means where you chose to fight back, it succeeds and okay. grabs you. Okay. So it grabs you, and again, it's just mouth coming for what's left of your mouth. Guys, oh. this kid, this kid's on me, man. <laughs> so now it is going to be Feyruz's turn. Feyruz, you see the one that uh, was coming after you and Margot looks like it's down for the count, but now Carter has been grabbed by this child. Is the oh. child like super strong? Am I being like lifted? lifted up by this thing or is it crawling up me it's it's unusually strong yeah. uh where it grabs you and i forgot uh because of a maneuver actually i have to roll twice uh because of the build ah. difference and i failed yeah, you did. and you rolled a hard success so you are not grabbed so you just see this child uh encroaching we need to guess. play this like a hundred times before i can get these rules down but we'll get it right what do you do Frey ruse Okay, if he's not, if the child is not immediately on Carter, then I'm going to spend this time to reload. Okay. He'll live forever. <laughs> I'm cool, guys. Don't worry about it. Clip, clip, clip. Okay, and Although, you like, okay, how far is this kid off of you? Like, is it just, like, immediately approaching? It's yeah, on, he's right it's, next to him. It tried to grab on. me. Yeah. Okay, all right. In this case, am I able to grab one of the legs of this table and have it still be on fire and try to stake this kid? <laughs> yep. Cause that's cool. <laughs> I want. Uh, that's what I would like to do. All right. So you're gonna. The table, as we've established, is on fire. So that leg comes off uh, like a chicken leg at Thanksgiving, and hey. then you rush over to it and just try and smack it with it. Yeah, I want to try to like stab him with it. Okay. Um, great. It is going to try and fight back and and just rake you. Uh, so you roll your brawl. I'll roll my brawl as well. Uh, okay. I have a regular success. I, too, have a regular success. You were the initiator, so you succeed. Give At me, one point. Give me a D8 uh, worth of damage. Okay. Because of the fire. Is. Four points. Okay, four points. Beirut's to the rescue, Carter. This thing was within inches of grabbing you with its strong child hands. Yeah. <laughs> but instead, Feyruz just sticks that, and it's like, ah, ah, it's got the flaming uh, table leg sticking out of its chest. But it is still alive. And uh, now it is, uh, it's either Carter or Vaughn's turn. Um, you both have the same decks. Um, so you guys can just decide who goes first. Uh, it's up to you. Well, I mean, you're in the tent, right? Do you even know what's going on? <laughs> I d well, I don't. I don't know precisely what's going on inside. I'll take it. Um, uh, I think from inside the tent, you see the sweat-streaked face of of uh, Vaughn Villiers, like still kind of shaking in in rather insane shock. And I pull a bundle out of the pack 
and like whip it open and out rolls a uh, British Imperial 303 Enfield rifle. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I take that up and want to re-enter the fray. But I imagine okay. that was that's probably the turn. Taking that rifle out and uh, exiting the tent, you now come out looking like a hero with a rifle. Carter, this thing has a uh, flaming table leg impaled in its chest. Feyruz mm-hmm. is right there next to you. Uh, you're there as well. What do you want to do? I'm going to try to hit it with this machete that's in my hand. That's smart. That's just smart. You know, that's that's just smart role play. Yeah. It's going to... Uh, it doesn't like that, so it's going to try and fight back. And I cannot roll a success to save my life today. Oh, neither can I. I rolled a 96. Ooh. Seven. Uh, what is your brawl? 70. Okay, so you're fine. That's not a fumble. Um, you said over 70. Okay, great. Yeah. So just just a big old miss, and I uh, failed as well, so luckily you don't get attacked. Worst result is that the kid is still up. Goes to the next round. It's going to be Margo and then the kid. Margo, you see Feyruz heroically uh, impale it with a flaming table leg, uh, but they're in bad shape um, with this this kid is about to act. You see it going to reach for one of them. What do you do? I, um... Do my sour battle cry and try to muster my courage after almost being eaten and almost being grabbed. And my, this is the third time I'm about to swing this machete ever. Um, run up to it and try to swipe at it. Okay. okay. What does your battle cry sound like? It's like, get, get back, get, get back, you kid. Oh, goodness. The, it's more like a battle shovel. This is eloquent. Frustration. <laughs> Give it hell, Margo. All right, here we go with that. Uh, um, I'm just looking at something here. Yeah, so just a little side note. Once someone is dodged or fought back in a round, all further attacks against them are made with a bonus die unless that creature has multiple attacks. So uh, we're in a new round here. If I choose to fight back... I think one of you guys might have supposed to have a, a bonus die, but in this case, uh, I'm going to give the bonus die to you, Marco, because this awesome. I just tried to fight back. You get a bonus die where it only had one attack. So That's in this great. case, you roll the hundreds twice and take the better. Because I just rolled once and I failed, so let's roll that other 10. Ooh, I got a, a 16 under 30 with that roll, thankfully. Ooh, Ooh. Almost a uh, hard success. I failed, so that is enough for you to do... <gasps> 1d8 worth of damage. He's already taken four damage. All right, here we go. Need that big eight. Five. Five, okay. All right, so nine total. You come up and slice at this thing. And now it's its turn. It has Margot as a target, Feyruz as a target, and Carter as a target. I'm going to roll uh, another d100. I'm going to leave out 100. One through 33, Margot. 34 through 66. Feyruz... And then anything above there except 100, Carter. Marco, it's you again with a 22. Oh, oh, Jesus. It's, it really, it just it can't help itself. What do you want to do here? Do you want to try and fight back? Um, or do you um, want to just try and dodge it again? Uh, I think because the mom was so beastily strong, this, this child isn't probably as strong, but I'm going to be safe and fight back because I didn't, I think, that one time and it didn't. Okay. Me well. All right. You have the same build, so I won't take a penalty. Uh, so just roll your brawl, and I will roll my maneuver. Or no, no, I wanted to dodge, not fight back. Okay. Then okay. Uh, you roll dodge, and I'll roll my maneuver. Oh boy. I failed. I got a sixty over forty-seven. And it got a hard success. So oh, once cool, again, cool. it grabs you. It is now up to your friends to kill it before it comes back around to its turn. And it is Feyruz's turn. Feyruz, you see it grab Margo, your new friend. So help, this child is so strong. Oh, uh, I'm reading some producer notes here that I actually don't have to reload just yet. Because there's six. 
Oh, there's six round, uh, six uh, rounds in there. Okay, I thought there was only three. All right, thank you, Michael. Okay. Michael backstage. Been a, a ton <laughs> of help on this venture uh, so far. Michael, thank you. I should have this chat open. My God. Okay, so um. so you're good. You're still fully loaded here. You used last round to stake it with the table leg, but now you've got three bullets left. All right, I am going to... So is the, the other one's down, right? Yeah, the other one's down. It's 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 been it's immolated in okay, the flaming so table. Okay, so I'm gonna unleash three more into this thing. All right, now here's what I'll tell you: where you're firing into melee because it's grabbing uh, Kate. Well, actually, you're oh, already taking this? a penalty die for each shot. Normally, oh. you would take a, uh, another penalty. Do I, I wait? Am I risking shooting one of my friends? If you fumble, I could certainly rule that as you oh, shoot, oh, oh, Marco. Okay. I want to do something crazy though. And That's it's not trying to shoot one of my friends. This is what is what I wa have wanted to do before I saw that Shoot note. Carter. No. Okay. I <laughs> wanted to, okay, you know how we got lamp oil as like a bet because we knew we had to fire, we would, these things would be killed with uh -huh. fire. I wanted to do something crazy like run in, grab the lamp oil, like chug some and do that, that carnival, like spit it out into the kid because he's already on fire with the steak. That is pretty cool. Try to light the kid on fire. I like it. All right, so you run in there, grab the lamp oil, come running back out as you're chugging it, and go to spray him. Yes, I don't know what role that is. <laughs> uh, clearly, it's your uh, lamp oil blow skill. It's your spray <laughs> skill. It's Thursday. Yeah, uh, yeah you know, I, I took I took so many extra points in that. Um, yeah, at the end of the skill. day, when in doubt, just make it be brawl. Okay. All right, we can, uh, we can do rating. that. Give me a credit rating roll. <laughs> oh, that's bad. Uh, yeah, no, uh, I'm going to say that this, you know, you're getting pretty close. Would this be like a dex? Would this be? Yeah, you know what? Go ahead and give me a dex roll. Okay. And I am not going to fight back because I'm going to say you're doing this from a distance. Okay. Give me a dex roll. All right, here we go. I got to get under a 55. Yeah, don't fumble. I don't like this face that you're making. Yeah. I don't like it. You know, that, that fire is like... awfully close to Marco. It's, I it got seems... a 95. Oh no. What's that oh, mean? Dear, oh, dear. What does it mean? I got a 95. I don't think that's a. I don't think that's a fumble. I think 96 to 100. If your score is less than 50, what is your deck score? 55. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. Oh, okay. I think you guys have rolled a lot, so of 95s sorry. Today. a lot of 90s. A lot of 90s. Mm-hmm. I was like, wow, this is going to be the coolest thing ever. Just kidding. I did not roll <laughs> well just, at all. You just drank it by accident. If your skill is less than 50, it's 96 to 100 is a fumble. Whereas Ooh, over 50, okay. it's just a 100. Had you fumbled, I was going to have the fire lick on Margo and have her start burning alive. Um, but How many you luck didn't. points is that? Do I, do I burn? <laughs> Well, that's the thing is you can, I wonder if you can burn away a fumble. Probably not. That would be too you easy. Said, you said Why it wasn't just... a fumble. No, I know. But I'm saying like, if you say you roll a 97, couldn't you just use, use luck to make it not a fumble? That I must be a case like where you're not be... allowed to do it. Because yeah. I yeah, could sure. burn 40 luck points and make it that a success, which I'm willing to do because it sounds really cool. You want to you want to burn forty luck points to make that a success? It's up to you. No, I don't. Luck? I don't. No, that forty is too much. I can't. Bro, I'm, I'm looking at me and uh, Carter and Vaughn still have to go. I think right, or at least okay. one. Okay. Yeah, it's going. I, I believe in. Go. I believe in you guys. All right, Vaughn. You. Uh oh. You <laughs> come out. Me. <laughs> yeah, the guy with altitude sickness. You've come out of the mm -hmm. tent. You have your three hundred three. Uh, what are we doing here? One shot. Now, are you are you saying that because this critter this creature critter is currently engaged in melee that that would already put me at a at a penalty so this plus altitude puts me at a double penalty i don't know if there's double penalties uh michael you can let us know in the chat if you know off the top of your head I, right now my ruling is it's just one penalty uh, okay. i don't think you take double penalties although there's a part of my brain that thinks i did read that that would just get wild yeah roll three d uh roll 100 <laughs> three times and take the worst that seems ridiculous so I'll you just... do take the penalty but you already had that because of the altitude sickness all right, yeah, I, I burst out. I see what's happening. I drop to a knee, level, level, very much in quotes, <laughs> my, uh, my rifle at the uh, at this child who's a eel-like maw is snaking its way towards uh, Fraulein Sauer. Here we go. Um, like, 
Back to the doomsday book you crawled out of! Um, and... Oh my gosh! I rolled the two tens, or two hundred, hundreds, I should say, and I rolled a fifty both times. Which... puts me... at a success, because my uh, firearm skill with rifles is sixty-five. Ooh. Boom! All right, what is the damage for your 303? 2d6 plus 4. This could Ooh. be a kill shot. Let's just see. 2d6 plus 4. It's already taken 9 points oh, yeah. of damage. That is 10 points of damage. Whoa! This thing's going down. <sighs> Describe to me what happens when that bullet hits it. <laughs> okay, yes, yeah, so it's back to the doomsday book you crawled out of, and you just, and suddenly, like, the the, the pounding pain in uh, Vaughn's head, the, all the chaos around assumes a weird sort of clarity, because this is now eerily familiar. It's it's the din of battle, suddenly. Uh, the echoes of, of, uh... Of screams and the and the smell of burning oil coming from the direction of Feru's, <laughs> and just like squeezes the trigger, and you just see this child's eel-like face crumple under this bullet that tears through it, uh, sending a gout of ooze onto the ground. It hits the ground. The flaming table legs still impaled at its chest. How do you want to finish this thing off? It's down, but you've been burn told. It. Burn it. Dismember, dismember the limbs! <laughs> burn the bodies! Your fairies mm-hmm. are just waving her. I feel like just out of fear that Margot would definitely default to like just trying to chop off the limbs. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you just start chopping off the limbs, just chopping off the, the arm and decapitating this child! It's a monster. Uh, and just cutting off all its limbs and scattering them everywhere. Uh, and you look over at the woman and she's just a, a burnt uh, husk like Aunt Beru. And, uh, and now you wonder in this mess, where is Jackson and where is Nyara? What do you do? Do we know where their tent was? Was it next to us? You know where Nyara's tent is? It's about 10 tents down. 10 huts down. I feel like head in that direction. Yes. Um, yeah. Yep. All right. You uh, rush over past more bodies. You see like, it looks like if the villagers that are still alive are driving off the rest of them or have uh, killed them. So maybe you're telling them like, Chop them, chop them apart, burn them, and they're looking, and they understand because they're uh, they speak the universal language of we gotta we get, it. yeah oh, just oh, remember. <laughs> so they start burning the bodies, everything. You get to the tent, and you walk in, and you see Nyara laying on the ground with a, a body sort of draped on top of her, of a dark-skinned man. And then you see Jackson Elias standing above the body with a smoking revolver in his hand. Uh, And he's just like shaking. And then Nyara with what little strength she has left like pushes the corpse off of her. And you see the dark skinned man is a Siri as well. And Jackson came at the last minute and saved her. Do you burn it? Do you dismember it? Well, oh, Carter do? starts going yeah. to town with the machine. Mm-hmm. Smart. Mm-hmm. Smart. Yeah. Smart. Shooting old sport. Just chopping oh. time. lamp oil. <laughs> His hands mm-hmm. shaking. He's just like, I, I heard the screams and I, I ran, I ran in here first. When I saw something come, come rushing in, I didn't even think. I just, I just fired. Um, they're they're real. I can't believe it. They're real. You you make a peculiar sort of beast in these mountains. I'll tell you that much. As um uh, Villiers is lighting two cigarettes and handing one to him, settles settle his nose. Yeah, the, the rich and the rich nerve tonic of uh of the Virginia leaf will set you right. Hmm. And, uh, this is this isn't what. This isn't exactly what the book said, though. 
Burke said that these came over from from the colonists. There's right. Right, they said they were all white men. That's what the legends say, and then the yeah, professor... Yes. I've been said getting the eyeballs well. since we since we arrived here. It turns out that um, some of these are... Uh, some of these Karasiri have come, become rather local. They, they literally are local. The two, the, the mom and the, the child, the Rus, we saw them on the, on the boat. I didn't think anything of yeah. it, but then they were the, the monsters. There was a child, one of these things? Yeah, yes. Oh, yes, we killed a child. No, whatever, was, whatever was wearing that child. <laughs> and you can still find whatever's left of it, maybe. So we're talking about some kind of like an infection. Is that right? Yes. Yes, Tilling us. That's that's the only it's the only logical explanation. Uh, it's said up in these uh, up in these mountains in these jungles, there all sorts of things will swim swim up you or crawl inside you and do, Was that what the do terrible worm things to a worm? person. But how does it infect you and then you, it leaves no trace? Must be that kissy worm thing from before. And you say Fibru is just like vomit at the realization that this worm that almost crawled into her mouth could have been the same. Could have been the same. The look on Jackson's face is one is like his whole worldview is crashing down in front of him right now. Like he has always disavowed this. And even coming in here today, he didn't see a creature like this attack uh, uh, Trinidad uh, didn't see a creature attack the professor he saw the aftermath but now he's seen it with his own eyes and now he's trying to like he's weighing this idea that the, the larva they implant into them could turn them into this then what are they doing then what are they doing are they, are, they, are they trying to increase their numbers it's it. It's just simple biology, old man. Every, everything is attempting to increase. <sighs> it's, it's like a colony of, uh, a colony of wasps, uh, or ants. Uh, Carter goes over to the, um, the tent flap and peeks out just to see what's going on outside in terms of, uh, the chaos dying down. Is it... It seems like the chaos is dying down. Um, they've taken your uh, your lead and has be- have begun uh, dismembering and burning the bodies. Um, but there uh, are uh, half a dozen or so that you can see just from looking out the flap, uh, dead villagers as well. Um, Carter turns to, to Jackson's like, you need to ask them if anyone has been uh, kissed or mouth to mouth by anybody that just attacked this village right now okay uh, Jackson's kind of like in a a stupor and and he shakes out of his like yes yeah I'll I'll, I'll have I'll, 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 I'll tell someone and then and they'll they'll translate and uh, and he walks out and Nayara just kind of like pushes herself up and she's like it's a sickness it is a sickness that is spreading. And it is spreading from this pyramid you seek. The activity like this has been growing as of late. We hear it more and more that these Karisiri are appearing. And now they are no longer white devils. They are our people as well. You you and your destination. You are in great danger. As as this is all going on, um, and there are bodies all over the place, um, could I do like a spot hidden to see if there's something about these infected or about these Kari Siri that maybe we haven't seen or picked up on yet? Yeah, for sure. Let's see what that is. There we go. Ooh, 71 under 75. Made Ooh, it. pretty good spot hid. Um, you know, the, the, the most interesting characteristic is there's only like two of them are white men and the rest are exclusively all other walks of life. 
locals that have been converted. Um, but what's yeah. left of the bodies that are, you know, some of them being dismembered, burnt, there's nothing on there uh, that like really jumps out at you. Um, although one of the, the, the white men, the clothing looks like it's from a different time period. It's old, frayed. Puffy shirt. Puffy shirt. Yeah. Puffy shirt. Lots of ruffles. One of the, uh, His license one of says he was born a long time ago. Helmets with the big dorsal fin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I have a bizarre... Vaughn has a bizarre thought of... Uh, does, does one of us in our possession currently have that uh, chunk of gold from the museum? Jackson. Didn't Jackson have it? Yeah, he has it. Jackson. Um, um, he comes back in. It's like, I... I I, I, I told them, and, 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 and so far, no one says they've been kissed. Jackson, uh, listen up, old boy. That scrap of gold that we uh, retrieved from the uh, museum. Um, yeah. You happen to have that on you by any chance? Yeah, I have it. I have it with me in my in my bag. I didn't leave it near Larkin. Um, uh, rather rather oh. foolish thought. Uh, can't quite get rid of. Uh, just help me uh, soothe my mind, man to man. Hmm? Might I see it? Sure, sure. And he he goes to his hut. He comes back, um, and he has it wrapped in like a pillowcase. And he just hands it over to you. I would like to unwrap it, and almost like using it as a wand or a probe, reach over and touch one of the prod at one of these Karasiri bodies with it, and see if there's any reaction. <sighs> You lay this chunk of gold on uh, one of the remains, um, and you see it start to sear its flesh. Ooh. And it starts to sizzle, and you get that smell of burning skin mm. and hair. And I think, I think he's almost, he's trying to talk himself out of it as it's happening. It's like, you see, this, this is a biological infection. Otherwise, it would, ex uh, that's why nothing will happen when I, um. Uh, yes, uh. Fairs just vomits more. <laughs> One of the larva pops up. It, oh, God. <laughs> Where'd that come from? <laughs> what did I eat? So, but, while but this that's, is. But that's impossible. While this is happening and Vaughn is in disbelief, maybe, um, it seems like, like Margot's thinking, and it seems like there's two potentially different. Illness? Like we've seen two things. We've seen circle chest stuff, and we've seen and there's plenty kissy, of that around camp too. Kissy worm stuff. So yeah. So I was gonna ask, like, we're dismembering this man. Um, does he have a circle chest? All of the uh, bodies, uh, the victims, we should say, like around camp, um, that you can see, uh, have a gaping hole on their chest. Mm. You don't see anybody uh, if 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 uh, Jackson comes back or the people he was talking to come back and they're like, yeah, no, no one says they were they were uh, kissed. I I just I, I yeah I I feel like this is too different. What 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 we saw at the museum with the kiss and the and the maggots, it's different than what happened to the woman and what happened to these people. Um, I don't know what the maggot is. Well, but. Vaughn, you were talking about wasps and hives. There's always yeah. a queen, right? I mean, maybe there's a different species of one of these things that can actually lay eggs, create others. Or perhaps it's two different... Uh... <laughs> maybe that's just how they multiply. There's even, one is, even one the is white, breeding, one is feeding. Even the white corpses, the two fruity poofy poofy guys <laughs> yeah. uh, don't have they also uh, have you know, like everybody else in terms of well they were just killed by the villagers right okay yeah uh, but all the villagers that are laying there uh, have gaping holes in their chest and looks like the uh, their something was sucked out of their body oh, they're right, like right, all emaciated like Trinidad was so yeah, there's two different things going on here. Very important point that Margo's making. Mm -hmm. There's this 
sucking out. And then there's the implanting. Yeah, there's drones and there's a queen. And the one that grabbed Carter and the one that grabbed Margo a hundred times, it looked like they were going in for your mouth, right. not for your chest. Uh. Did they look emaciated and sucked out of and like had the gaping chest no. when they were walking around? It's like after they were hit down. In fact, they looked like kind of fat. Mm. They like love their, that fat. Their <laughs> stomach was like <gasps> distended. They mentioned that, yes. It's as though they they, they want to spread and multiply. The, the, and <gasps> But they also need to sustain themselves. Into some, they will put their egg, their children, their larvae into others. They will simply take what they need to sustain them. I, th- I think I, so it may be these former villagers were tr- trying to impregnate us as they were going for the mouth, but what we saw at the museum with um, the emaciated lady, Maybe before they are ready to reproduce, they feed. They get fat off the victims. Yeah. Ah, guys, come on. Maybe what (laughs) killed the lady fed first and then impregnated the man at the museum. All right, I think we got, I I think I got the gist of it. Uh, it's just yeah, saying they like to have a little dinner first. I can before reword they... it if you want. Are you sure? I feel like I we're retreading the same material. <laughs> okay. What do we? What do we do? What do we do? And 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 we've got to compose ourselves when we get back there in front of Larkin. I mean, we hope he doesn't even know that we left. But everybody acts casual. Yeah, we can't let on. Here. Jesus, we can't let on about this. And if what do you think? about de Mendoza is true? Where is he really? So, the, the white men were different than, the, like, the villagers, so I'm just not sure how to approach de Mendoza and possibly, like, the guy who's leading us. Like, well, they de- might be different. With de Mendoza, the, the only... By the way, I could not have just said De Mendoza, more dumb American. <laughs> De Mendoza? De Mendoza. Um, he, we, that has to be the element of surprise. We can't let on that we know anything about that guy. The only way we're going to stand a chance against a guy who's like hundreds of years old. But do you is, know what this means? He understands them. This yeah. means that at any point, we could be completely surrounded. Completely surrounded. But if they we turn, don't... is that how it works? We don't yes, know. And... If the, and what if, what if they were to get one of us alone? Why, we'd come strolling back with one of those things inside of us and none of us would be the wiser. Perhaps it's already happened to one of us, hmm? What? See, uh... I've already vomited everything that was inside of me. Hold on, Buster Brown. Let's talk about that for a quick second. You bailed on me and ran back into a tent and you're the war hero. So you're telling, you're, maybe you're the one that smelt it. You know what I mean? Or dealt it. Whatever the phrase is. You start pointing fingers, you were the one who took off first. Me and Margo uh, were with each other the entire time. I only ran to get something in which I'm more proficient. Mr. Tillinghast, I never said anything about being a hero. (laughs) Well, you you got the uh, fancy accent. You could have fooled me, man. If we can't trust each other, we... We, we lose. We have numbers on our guides, so... Yes, quite right, and, and, and I, I've lifted this, and I wasn't burned. Okay, as long so as let's all touch this, this thing. Let's all touch it. As long right. as we've got this, we've got a way of telling who's who and what's what, yes? All right, I'll Watch go first. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Carter, just for yeah. dramatic tension, we go one at a time. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, oh, I said one, two, three, go. <laughs> <laughs> so Fabruz has touched it. <laughs> Jackson uh, touches it. Yeah. Obviously, he's been handling it. Carter goes for it, grabs it. 
I'm assuming nothing happened. Burns That's alive. You tell me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one by one, you all touch it, and, and Jackson's like, "We, all right, listen, we're get this is we're getting paranoid here. This is this is a lot, and and, and no one knows more than I do that this is this is this is a lot. Um, yes. I was expecting something dark, but this is beyond what I could have possibly expected. We have to keep our heads. We have to keep our heads, or or we will lose them. Quite uh, right. I don't know what the best course of action is here, but we have a, a long journey that begins tomorrow, and we cannot be weak, so let's try and, 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 and make the most out of the rest of this night. Get up uh, in a few hours and, and head back to the mainland so that we can meet up with Larkin, and it's like none of this ever happened. Um, and he just, he's apologizing to Nayara. He's like, I, I, I hope I didn't bring this here with me. And she's like, no, 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 no. And he just feels terrible because all these people are dead now. And this was her fear to begin with. This is why she ran off to these islands in Lake Titicaca. Because she thought that even by talking to Elias about the Kari that they were watching her. And Jackson just wrote it off as she was being paranoid. And now uh, it's true. And so Jackson just feels horrible, horribly guilty. Um... But you now know from Nyara where she believes this pyramid to be. So if for any reason you and Larkin parted ways or you were just wanted to leave him or whatever, you've got, you've got what you think are pretty, uh, pretty good directions on how to get there. So you want to call it a night? As best we can, probably, yeah. Then let's take a quick word from our sponsor. So you're going to call it a night. And what a night it's been. You're woken up from a sound sleep to the sounds of screaming. And I imagine we just see a slow motion of like bodies being thrown onto the fires. And is it the body of the Scarisiri? Is it the bodies of loved ones that are just, it's a, let's just burn them because there's nothing left of them. Just people weeping into each other's arms. Just destruction of this poor little village. I don't even know how much sleep you get as you head back to your huts and just lie there staring at the ceiling, replaying this, replaying the this lamprey-like mouth coming for you to do God knows what. And eventually, uh, Elias comes in a few hours later and it's like, we we should go, let's gather your things, we'll, we'll head back. So we have some time to get situated at the hotel before we have to meet Larkin. Goes into both of your huts and gives a long hug to, hug to Nayara and, and he's, he's, he's crying. He feels horrible, he feels completely guilty for this and she's trying to, trying to calm him down and he's just, He seems more determined than ever to now go to this pyramid, not just for his novel, but to help this situation. And so you get ferried back to the mainland. If anyone's staring at you now, it's just the same stairs that you were getting as you were coming in to Puno. But eventually you make it back to the, uh, the main area, you get to the hotel, and you've got a couple hours before you got to meet Larkin to freshen up. Maybe you can finally catch a couple hours of sleep or uh, shower. And eventually you come downstairs and, and Larkin is there and he, he has uh, several pack animals. There's some donkeys and a couple horses and they're all loaded to the brim with blankets and pickaxes and uh, tents and ropes and everything uh, necessary for the journey. And he smiles and he's like, well, we are, uh, we are ready. Uh, we shall be ready shortly uh, to head off. Is there any last thing anyone needs to do before we go? Because once we head out into the wilderness, uh, that's it. We are not returning uh, until we find this pyramid. And when we do return, all of our lives will be changed. Some might say they already have been. 
Yes, that's a wise, wise, uh, wise thing to say, Mr. Tillinghast. Food would be good. Food, ah, yes, well, I, I have uh, plenty of rations, but why use those when we have uh, an option here? Uh, we don't have time to sit down and eat, but uh, I'm sure we can get something from uh, a vendor. Um, and so he'll uh, he'll offer to purchase food for everyone. Um, so let's uh, let's eat it uh, as we as we head off. Um, we've got a lot of walking to do today, but I'd like to get uh, a good chunk of uh, travel time done uh, before nightfall. Uh, and he explains to you that he believes it's going to take you three days now, just going into the bush um, to get to the pyramid. Uh, and every time he mentions the pyramid, it's always in hushed tones because he's paranoid that someone is going to like steal his knowledge of this hidden archaeological find. It's going to take three days. It's about 70 miles, he thinks, south-southeast of here. Let's go back to that map of the uh, the route. Um, you can see it in your little sidebar there. You're in Puno, and where he is marked as the ruins, that's 70 miles south-southeast of Puno, right, running uh, almost parallel uh, to Lake Titicaca. And... Uh, so you buy your your food, he pays for it, and you set off. Jackson Elias, who he thinks is Jesse Hughes, Augustus Larkin, and the four of you. And you travel for a few hours, and uh, the landscape very quickly changes to, uh, you know, the 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 civilized. Uh, downtown of Puno, which was nothing compared to downtown Lima, but still people bustling about uh, to just like no one. Um, there's grassy plains, hills, valleys, mountain passes, um, and the wildlife gets wilder and wilder the deeper you go. You're not but three hours outside of the city before you see like condors in the sky. Um, you think you see uh, spectacled bears once in a while, uh, which is a certain rare kind of bear uh, that you find in the Andean Highlands, not, as I originally thought, uh, a bear wearing spectacles, <laughs> like a like a wise old bear. All right, they all are myopic here for some mm -hmm. reason. Mm. You may ask me three questions. <laughs> um, time to time you see like a jaguar like a jaguar darting through the bushes. Um, so it's, it's kind of terrifying, but also awe-inspiring. Um, at one point, you uh, take a break to just water the animals and uh, give water to the animals. And Margot, you look down and inches from your foot is a 30-foot anaconda just like sliding past you into the brush. Cool, cool, cool. I bet it's probably not as strong as the child from last night. And that's right. probably what she's thinking. She's like, how strong is this compared to these monsters? <laughs> and I feel like we see these animals and maybe at least Margot's like scared. But then she's like, oh, no, it's fine. It's just a terrifying animal. It's not a Kiari Siri. Yeah, you've seen worse now. Um, yeah, nothing's facing. Nothing's facing Carter. It's just like <laughs> down, Jaguar, back, looks down at his empanada. Doesn't need it. <laughs> Larkin's mood kind of shifts throughout the day. Um, he goes from being very jovial to uh, being agitated at times. Not like snippy with you, but just kind of, you might ask him something and he just gives you a short answer. Um, you can't tell if it's fatigue from the journey or knowing what you know now, if he's going through withdrawal. Um, but he's just... Uh, a little jumpy. Um, he sees these animals and isn't just like, bah. You know, he gets nervous by it, but, uh, you know, you have weapons. He has weapons uh, to, protect, to protect himself. There's no guards with you. It's just the six of you. Um, even though it's late summer, uh, as the sun begins to set, it gets really cold. And uh, Jackson and Augustus both tell you that, like, temperatures drop below freezing at night um one of the benefits of going with larkin and not just leaving him back in lima uh 
is that he has prepared for this. So he has extra warm clothing, blankets, um, everything you need to stay warm uh, because it gets really, really cold. And as dark approaches, it starts getting uh, too cold to keep going. And so Larkin says, this is uh, uh, as good a place as any to uh, build a camp. We will uh, set out at first light. Um, there, there's plenty of food. Um, just obviously we need this uh, to last us all the way to the pyramid and then back. Uh, so please just uh, ration uh, ration as, as needed. Uh, I am I am just uh, spent. I am uh, I'm surprised how tired I am. Uh, so I'm going uh, straight, to, straight to bed so that I can be uh, fresh uh, for tomorrow's journey. Um, thank you. Uh, get excited. This is going to be, this is going to be, uh, uh, just life-changing, life-changing wealth. No provisions uh, at all, Sport? You? No, no, I, I've, I've, I ate along the way. I'm, I'm fine. I actually feel mm. uh, a bit, a bit ill. Um, so I'm just going to, just going to lie down. But thank you. Thank you for thinking of me. Um, don't, don't take my portion. I may want, uh, I may want extra tomorrow, but for now I'm going to, uh, call it a night you should be all set there's plenty of warm blankets and uh, just keep your uh, keep your tents closed tight obviously uh, animals and whatnot oh i didn't uh, i didn't uh, know how to bring this up but do, do, do you think we should set a watch uh, or or do we just uh, keep a fire going no or? no let's no let's both. do a watch well, i say let's do both old man yes all right um i uh, can can you handle this, or or, or do you need me to take a portion of the evening? I'm I'm not. I, I don't want to be uh, above that, even though this is my expedition. Um, but uh, if this is something you'd be willing to take care of, I'd I'd be fine with that. You as know well. what? You're foot in the bill. You take a you take a load off. You do what you need to do. We'll handle it. Five of us. Yeah, will we're fine. We got plenty of rest the night before. <laughs> right, we're so spry, right? Yeah. Minus rain. Oh, well, that's, that's very kind. Couldn't be more kind. rested, old boy. You, you, you're so drained and shagged from the from the journey so far. I wouldn't uh, wouldn't dare deprive you of an evening sleep. I, I appreciate that. That's very very kind of you. I, I don't want to appear uh, to be uh, on, on uh, different classes here. We're all uh, on the same expedition, and, and what we find there will be split right down the line. Uh, I really want this to be uh, th- there's there's enough to go around for everyone. So. Um, Great, very smart, wise uh, of you to to set the watch. Uh, I will be in my tent, and I will see you uh, before the sun rises. Good night. Nine, Ninety-nine. Good night. He goes into his tent. Good night. Don't Good. let the big bugs bite. Yes, the, the bugs. Bed bugs. What? They're they're big around here. Yes. <laughs> goes back in his tent, and uh, Jackson's just kind of looking at you out of the side of his eye, but seems like he didn't know that you went off for the night or if he did he doesn't care um he's just a weird character and now that you're not quite sure where he stands in all of this uh it just makes every interaction with him heavy um so maybe you feel relieved that he's just gonna go fuck off for the night so you build a fire and uh you start setting up your tents and everything before it gets too dark and uh What's the plan here? How would you like to split up the watch? Um, I have a question. Uh, yeah. Is Demondoza with us? No, no. Remember Demondoza, he said, oh, he's, he's, he's actually got some family matters to deal with. He might meet up with you later. And, uh, okay. He was hoping he would see you by Puno, uh, but uh, or he, Larkin was hoping that he would see Demondoza by Puno, but now um, if you asked about him, he would say, uh, unfortunately, uh, it seems as if uh, he is waylaid. Uh, Back in Lima, or uh, or too late, and he does not have uh, the location as I do. So um, his loss, frankly. Mm-hmm. Yes. Forgive us, might be. I think we should pair off firearm to machete. Hmm. Ooh. Very okay. wise. Mm-hmm. Who wants the first shift? And what are the pairings? Who wants to be my partner? Says Margot. You have the machete, I'll, I'll, I'll pair off with Margot. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Oh, I get to get old Noodle Legs Vaughn over here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Noodle I Legs like how, 
Favors and I are like, yeah, let's hang out. And you two hate each other. <laughs> or like are just snarking. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. talk about <laughs> boys, possibly fight some monsters. Yeah. I just, I think Carver got carried away with his image of, of what he thought Vaughn was. And uh, Vaughn mm-hmm. skedaddled on him uh, pretty quickly. And so mm-hmm. now Carver just has his doubts. That's all. So okay. these two, talk it out. this odd, the odd couple, and uh, the Bobsy twins. When uh, <laughs> who wants the first shift, which would be like uh, until two a.m., and then who wants the second shift would be two to six a.m. Oof! I don't mind second shift, light light sleeper. Yeah, that's. I'll fine. take the first shift then. All hey, right. before we before we go to bed, guys, I just uh, I'm not one to really uh, think about this kind of a thing, but obviously we had a very long uh, donkey ride, and uh, it was very silent. Do you think? Just throwing it out there, is it our fault what happened to that village? Whoa. No. Like, would that have happened if we hadn't shown up? Uh, probably. Okay. Yeah, that's right. That's they right. Gotta, they still have it. to feed. They still have to procreate. That woman said that um, she felt as though they they were watching her already before we arrived. But I can't help but notice that among the locals, it seems as though we were the ones singled out for the kiss. Yeah. And at the museum, like we were there, we're supposed to be there. This is pretty heavy for right before bed. Look, far be it from me to take responsibility for any of my actions. Uh, I like where Frey Ruse has fallen on this. Uh, let's, we could stop talking now. I think that's great. I think it's a great move. Good night. Carter just goes into the tent. He's tying yeah. up our food into little bags on the tree limbs and yeah, Jackson making a fire. Jackson didn't like any of that um, because he f- he did feel guilty for this. And then thinking that you're being singled out, that now maybe you're being watched. That really sits on Jackson and you see it in his face. And so he sits out there with Margot and uh, Ferruz. Or maybe he goes into his tent and he comes out and he's like, I'm having trouble sleeping. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll keep watch with you if you, don't, if you don't mind the company. No, not at all. I just can't help but I can't help but think what Carter was talking about that maybe it is not your fault certainly but my fault for uh, for dragging you there in the first place but now I, I'm thinking that, that maybe Vaughn is onto something as well we haven't heard about any other attacks we were at the museum or is it me does Larkin know so I can know who I am and what I'm after. I'm endangering the mission. Couldn't say that part, but if these things have been around as long as they have, then they would have continued doing this regardless of whether we are here or not. I agree. I don't think we are that special. I think maybe we are kicking up the dust. Maybe. But as far as keeping your friends close and your enemies closer, couldn't hurt. That's true. It's always best to be on your guard in this situation. Well, that makes me feel a little better. I've always dove into my work and, and, and tried to, to give it my all because I enjoy it and I, I enjoy living on the edge. But when I do that, I'm endangering myself. I know the risks. I don't want to do that. And, endanger good people like you. So, thank you for not blaming me, but... Oh, no. Do Don't feel... you think it's difficult to come this far and not go all the way and see what this is all about and learn oh, I'm what in this it. all is? I'm in it for the long haul. I just don't want to... I don't want to bring harm to anyone. <sighs> don't blame you for... That helps at all. You know, the the riches, 
That excites me. Sure, I've never had a lot of money. But it's everything else that I really, really want to know about. If this cult does exist, what is its connection to these, these abominations? This, this, this type of information would be, would be earth shattering if it got out there. I don't think we are supposed to know any of this, but I'm not interested in knowing any of this, but I already looked into the face of what all of this is, and I, I can't go back now, but I do not relate to wanting to know. I just keep thinking to myself, and maybe it's just my mind, the way it works, I always think there's more, but I feel like this is just the beginning of something. That there's so much more going on here. But maybe not. Maybe I'm just caught up in my own fantasy. Anyway. Seems, seems whatever this thing is, it's part of a much bigger puzzle than any of us could ever, could ever imagine. No matter how it connects, it's... I can't come this far and not know. Yes. I feel the same way. Well, hopefully tomorrow will go just as smooth. I'm gonna... I'm gonna turn in as well. Um, try and get some rest when your shift's up. Or take turns watching each other. I'll see you in the morning. Thank you for this talk. I feel... I feel a lot better. I'm glad we had this talk to you. He smiles. He puts his hands on your shoulders. And he's just this kindly man. And he uh, goes into his tent. And eventually, uh, 2 a.m. comes along. And, uh... To go in there and shake Vaughn and Carter. <laughs> I, I, go to, I go to Carter and just tap the metal part of his mask. Honey, I can't put any more ointment on you. You're going to be fine. So you you dink my face the same way my uh, wonderful wife does it. Uh, all good? Ready for... Uh, Tag out. Yes, I have no, I have no strength to argue with anything you've just said right now. Um, I'm going. I really, really need some sleep. All right, you've earned it. I think. I don't know what you've been doing. <laughs> well, so far we're all alive. <laughs> Good Dink work. my face the same way my wife does. <laughs> <laughs> let's not just. Let's just not go dive in. There's a rhythm to your that. dinking. Ding, ding, ding. You understand? Let's, no, let's not. No, I don't. Under, I don't wish to understand at all. I, I really wish to get some sleep. Shave and a haircut. I'll right. go into yeah. dink. dink. I'll yeah, go you're going to wake up Vaughn? Yeah, I'll go into Vaughn's tent and be like, I have to pee. Please, I have to go pee. Can you keep a watch while I go pee? Yes, I suppose if the time has come, uh, there's, <laughs> there's, there's more than enough time for that and anything else you wish to do, of course. What I want to do is when I go pee, taking a torch with me to do that, but I want to pass by um, Larkin's tent mm. and um, see if I hear or see any snoop, snoop, snoop a little bit. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you, uh, your shift is up, but you're going to try and sneak in a pee and uh, Veyruz goes, takes her turn to lie down and uh, Carter and Vaughn are coming out and so you just go by the tent and you see the animals uh, nearby they're kind of like just outside of camp Um, and uh, give me a spot hidden okay here we go oh that's so sad I got a 92 that's bad 
Yeah, you go up to his tent and you hear snoring. Sitting here looking at my luck, and I'm like, do I want to spend 40 luck? <laughs> no. 40 luck on a whim. Uh, yeah, you, you, you hear snoring, um, and nothing really jumps out at you. Do you just pee on his tent flap? Yeah. Mark your territory. Mark my territory, <laughs> exactly. Margo and then maybe was here. Linger out in that area for a little longer, maybe space out for a second, digesting. However, mm. everything that's happened the last 24 hours is a little too long, and then, oh, snap out of it. Go back to the tent, go back to bed. Okay. As you're there, just taking in the night, it's just a very eerie feeling being out in the middle of nowhere. You look into the woods, and you just get the feeling that you're not alone. So you shake that off. You're tired. Maybe it's just your imagination playing tricks on you. You don't see anything. Animals are just chewing their cud. And you go sleep. And then we see Carter and Vaughn stoking the fire. Carter uh, pulls out sort of like a little notebook. Like, it occurred to me after what with Feyruz's dinking hmm. that, uh, <laughs> ding, have ding, she did, she. Good sip, you got her. <laughs> I, have, <laughs> I have yet to correspond with my comely wife, who I'm going to do. Uh, well, I'll do that right now. I'll just, start, you don't mind. I sometimes have to talk out loud when I'm writing. Vaughn, well, let me just start this here. So he starts, he takes out a pen, and he's like, Dearest Myrtle, <laughs> uh, how I miss you. I count the ways in which I do. And then he just freezes. <laughs> he's just, there's nothing, nothing is coming to him. Uh, man, Vaughn, you know, I just never really thought about this until we faced life threatening. Worm faces, but uh, I might not be a a great person. <laughs> I think crises um, make us take hard looks at ourselves, old man. Yeah, I've done a lot of shit. I think, I think you find the true grace and goodness and uh, and heroism are quite rare. And often come from the most unexpected places. Well, like, this this whole thing that we're on now, you know, before I was in it for the money, try to break out of my current situation. Now we're hearing things like we have to stop a temple from releasing all these creatures, and it's, it's kind of too late to go back. And uh, I'm feeling this weird feeling inside me. It's like, maybe the money doesn't matter so much as the saving the world thing? Hmm. It's weird. I don't know if I like it. Well, if altruism was easy, I suppose it wouldn't be noble. Hmm? That's pretty great. Sounds even better with the accent. Well, doesn't sound... Half bad your accent either. You have an accent to me. Isn't it fun? Aren't accents weird? So strange. I don't yes. I don't have an accent. I don't know what you're talking about. But uh, no, no, uh, no. I guess I sort of... Well, you must have seen it, right? In the in WW1. All your... Uh, Wait, that implies that it's going to happen again. <laughs> I don't want to give anything Dude, away. <laughs> but uh, you know how we had those dreams the other night? They were all kind of crazy. I saw this guy with a tiny mustache. I don't know. I'm sure it's going to be fine. Hmm. I, uh, I, I, in the, in, currently, in this year, I have no bad associations with that type of mustache. Right, exactly. <laughs> I'm sure that's a mustache that'll last for decades. <laughs> um, but you must have, I mean, you know, you were in the, in the war. You probably, you were a hero every other day. There's a fine line between um, what you think of as that sort of heroism and... Uh, what is merely duty? 
What happens on any given day out there? I wouldn't call heroism so much as I just call murder. So maybe what we've got now is is duty. Perhaps. Oh, that's easier to stomach. We'll just make a little make things a little better when you can. Hmm? Yeah, alright. Sounds good. Yeah, do let me. <clears throat> You're experiencing writer's block. Myrtle, was it? Take yeah. dictation. Oh, yeah. Do you have some words I can maybe throw <clears throat> her away? Just know that none of them will be coming from my heart. Good. Uh, Mur- just Myrtle. Myrtle. As I sit beside a fire here um, in the lower hemispheres of our, of our great world. Great world. I yearn only for the incandescent heat of your presence. Incan- incan what? Mm, incan- the, the blazing, the, blazing. The, the, con- the conflagration of your of your beauty. Let's go with blazing, I know how to spell that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got it. Mm. And I am drawn to you as a, as a, as a moth through flame. Would that, that I could, would that I could flit about your fire once again. And until the moment that we are joined together again. I remain your loyal, loving, etc. Uh-huh. Just the fire thing's funny, because really, she's just it's just a dusty fireplace. Down there. Oh. It's just not even lit. <laughs> the oh, flue is wide open. Moths coming in. Hmm. But I wrote it down. I wrote it all down. This is good stuff. I see. This, is, this was an entendre I didn't quite intend. <laughs> yeah, no, I got it. Um, British are very funny. <laughs> and, um... Yeah, you Americans are as well. And um, with that, I think maybe uh, uh, Vaughn will kind of maybe uh, uh, do some of the rounds. Just make, I can't, ever since we left Puno, I can't shake the feeling we're being watched. And um, uh, I'll just uh, hmm, give a little whistle and uh, as, as uh, and just um, goes off like a, uh, um, just whistling some Gilbert and Sullivan tune as he goes walking around. Uh, and can Mikado. I roll spot hidden? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I roll a 42 under 75. Whew. Okay, 42 under 75. Um... I know See, the kings of England, and I quote the fights of Stortoport from there as one to water, and I don't know what I can't have gone for. So you're walking around. I was hoping around. it was three little mates from school. <laughs> <laughs> Come from the ladies' seminary, three little mates caught all on weary. <laughs> you have this long conversation with Carter, and it seems like maybe for the first time you guys are on the same page. You needed this mm-hmm. uh, time. It's yes. this situation has put you together. Uh, so two very different people. It's good chap that Tilling has. Yeah, yeah. Seeing eye to eye, you walk around camp just again having this sixth sense that someone's watching you. But now you're not in society anymore. It's one thing to have those eyes looking at the white devils. It's another thing to be in the middle of nowhere and still have that feeling. How much is it, is it your imagination? But with your successful spot hidden, something jumps out at you. You're like, what do they, if I went? One of the donkeys is missing. Hello. And you remember you guys tied them to a, a tree and you go over there and you count them again and and you're almost positive that one of the donkeys is missing maybe one of the ropes got loose but you you notice that one of them is gone um was there a donkey per member of the expedition yeah altogether there's uh well there's six excuse me there's five pack animals all together um so just one less than mm-hmm. the total number of the expedition it's not like you're riding them they're just carrying right. goods but now you only see four unless you're crazy was there four now okay. you're starting to like contradict yourself okay um i think i might uh go back to the campfire and um tilling has told man mm. 
We did come with... We did come with uh, five of those asses, didn't we? <clears throat> uh, oh, yeah. Sorry. I just <laughs> Edwin somewhere else. Uh, yeah, there were five, five of them. Yeah, why? What's up? I thought so. I'm, a, I'm afraid something came into camp and gave us the slip. That because we're down an ass. <laughs> it's just every time you say it, it's just I, I just need a second to reset. Uh, okay, so you so one of them one of them is gone, is what you're saying? Uh, just so. Uh, well, it's a donkey, man. I mean, what are we supposed to do? What do you think that a, uh, a vampire came and killed a donkey? It seems like wouldn't they come for one of us? Um, I, even even. Uh, I was thinking that perhaps it was one of those jaguars we saw earlier, but now, uh... Oh, right. I mean, well, it could be, the, you know, obviously it could be And, and I think uh, Vaughn will take maybe a, 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 an improvised torch from the fire and walk back down the trail and just, like, coo, 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 kitty, coo. <laughs> just, like, uh... Well, Carter's out. like, don't, wait, where are you going? Don't leave me alone. Kick, 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 kick. All right, so the two of you start walking. Yeah, I started, uh, like, kind of coming up behind. Just... Mm-hmm. Give me a, both of you give me a listen roll as you start walking back in the direction of the animals. Oh, I love listening. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I don't love oh. enough to oh. beat the roll. I rolled a 28 over 20, so I'm going to spin that luck. Spin that and luck. And All right, so you turn that 28 into a 20 for success, and Carter, fail? Uh, yeah, by like nine points. If he's... he's Lucking out. All right, you start walking with your torch, and you're you're whistling and you're moving, and you get just past the area where the animals were, and you hear like a in the brush, about ten yards into the woods. Okay, um, ten yards into the woods. Yeah. Okay, uh, I, may I hand off the torch to uh, Carter and present arms, get the rifle ready? Wait, why are you doing that? Did you hear something? Yes. I don't hear, okay. Just there, old boy. Shh. Should Shh. We, maybe we should go get everybody. Light man, light man. And uh, <laughs> seeing if I can, uh, seeing if with the combination of the torchlight and, and now a gazing at where the source of the sound came from if I can get a bead on whatever it is. Okay, so yeah, so Carter's kind of holding it up high for you. And you've got the rifle and the two of you just walk into the woods in the direction of that Ooh. sound. And there's no path here, so you're just kind of walking, not knowing what's underneath your feet. Carter has his machete, by the way. He's got his machete. The torch in one hand, machete in the other. Go two yards, four oh. yards, seven yards. Get about 10 or 11 yards in, and you see something on the ground, like, <sighs> expanding and contracting. <sighs> and it just, you've never seen anything like this. It's so odd looking. It's like wrinkled and just... <sighs> And you go closer to it, and it's the donkey. But the donkey looks like it has been sucked dry. And sure enough, there is a huge hole on its side. And the donkey is just giving its last gasps of breath as blood pours out of the hole. And it just looks like it's been, like it was a balloon that got deflated. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Uh, let's, what, let's just, we should, let, this is, I think now is the time to go back and tell everybody uh, that this is going on, right? This, we're not going any further than this. This is a dead and the, donkey. And the, and the donkey's still suffering? Yeah. Bang. <laughs> Boom. You hear that what, shot what? echo throughout the woods. Like I said, sometimes altruism is hard, or it wouldn't be noble. And I walks and I uh, walks back to the um, camp. Um, so I check on the others, and uh, and I I will go and 
check of the other tents. Yeah, I would say that shot is loud enough. It's probably waking people up and... Yeah, so uh, Margot and Feyruz wake up. Jackson wakes up. Even Larkin uh, opens up and says, What? What is going on out here? Are we we under attack? So it would seem, old man. Something made rather grisly work of one of our asses. What? What? What happened? Did I, did, I thought I thought you were uh, we were we were taking watches. I'm not I'm not, I'm not blaming anyone, but did did, uh, did a predator get at one of our pack animals? That that means we'll be short. Just so I don't know what sort of nights. what sort of beasts are lurking around in these in this undergrowth. We've seen jaguars and and uh, bloody great snakes and God knows what else. Is it is it is it gone? Is it taken? No. It's gone, no. all right. It's, it's dead. Uh, yes. And uh, it had a... Uh, <sighs> and, and Carter's kind of like making meaningful eye contact mm-hmm. with everybody that's in on it. And is like... And it was uh, a very familiar looking wound on it. He's like... Oh. Familiar. What a strange, strange sort of wound. Oh, well, there are all sorts of beasts out here. I, I'm, I'm more concerned now about what we're going to have to leave behind. This is uh, five was 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 just the right amount with four. We're going to have to shed some equipment and uh, I'm afraid it may be uh, our blankets and warm clothing. We may have to suffer through some cold nights. I, I don't want to make any decisions right now. Uh, I will sleep on this. Um, let us uh, let's bring the animals in closer so that we yes. can really make sure that they are not. Uh, uh, we're just we're just leaving a fo- food source out for the for the animals in the area. Um, I'm sorry again. I'm not I'm not upset with you. It's just uh, it's it's frustrating. Now I'll have to. Uh, well, we're going to have to leave some things behind. Anyways, um, yes. If you, if you wouldn't mind just bringing them closer and uh, please, let's all try and. Uh, keep our heads about us. We could be the next snack for these things. Yeah. And you hear the very faintest click of uh, Feyruz's gun in the midst of this conversation as she's like looking around. Larkin, you're like, did Larkin just hear that? You're not quite sure. He's just looking around. All right. Well... Hopefully we will be rested even with this wake. Please, no more no more gunshots. Although I'm sure you did what you had to do to scare off that animal. Oftentimes just waving your arms will be enough. We don't well, want to keep that well in mind, old boy. Any more unwanted attention. Good night. And he goes into his hut. You need to see a Hendrix playing. Because he's doing heroin. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just turns on Hendrix in his Highly. makeshift tent. Just Nirvana. Just <laughs> going underground, blasting. Yeah. I'm as free as a bird. <laughs> Leave me be. Uh, Elias just <clears throat> sidles over to you. And uh, what was it? Dude, Dude. just. Making the circle chest all right, wound all right, all right. signal. He looks at Margo and Feyruz like he was feeling good about that last conversation. And now... You're saying it, eat, it eats animals too? It's all Does right. That make, Does that make sense? It's a big food source. Is this deliberate? Are they trying to separate us from our equipment? What else are they going to be asking us to leave behind? All right, all right, all right. It's, it's all right. We are, we are blessed that it didn't come for us. Remember, we must keep our heads. I'm just glad all of you are all right. Let's get some rest. You go to sleep. The next day comes. You gather things up. And uh, Larkin says uh, he's decided he's going to leave the uh, 
blankets that he brought, all of the extra warm clothing uh, that would save, uh, that, that was more than enough that would have gone on one of these donkeys. Um, but he assures you that like, as long as we build a, a large enough fire and people stay up all night to stoke it and we build the tents as close as possible, you know, at a safe distance, uh, it'll be a cold night, um, but you know, you're not gonna die um, the reality is, uh, you might suffer because of it. Um, I mean, can we not just take a, can I not just wear my jacket around my waist in that cool way where you tie it and you just got a little, you know what I mean? Like at least, at least get a hat, stick it in a pocket. Yeah. If anyone has any sur- survival, uh, mountain skill or even a good survival skill, uh, there'll be a chance, uh, at nightfall to put it to use hmm. just like survivor man would do, which was a great show. Um, but he just, he, he, you can tell this isn't, it's not up for debate. He's made the decision. That's what he's leaving behind. He needs the, the excavation tools. He needs the, the weaponry, um, and, uh, everything else. So time to go. Day two is, uh, a little more hectic than day one because, uh, you're going further away from, uh, where, people travel um there are there's not really clear paths anymore um but it's not like you're just walking and having to slash your way through it's just a a little slower going than it was uh the day before the terrain is also getting a lot more mountainous like you're going uh deeper into the mountains the elevation is changing um i should have had you roll it yesterday uh but I want to see if we can get rid of your altitude sickness, whereas yeah. the others were able to adjust more easily. Um, I have a feeble constitution. Um, so, so give I'm, me a con check. All right, here we go. Oh my gosh, okay, I crushed it. I rolled an eight under, oh. under 45. That's an extreme success. Beautiful. You know what, maybe... Uh, Larkin is like, uh, he sees that you're struggling and he says, I, uh, I got this from, uh, Nayara, um, and it's, a uh, cocoa it's, leaf. He's it's like, it's just, some of his heroin. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This'll, this'll put that altitude sickness <laughs> right to bed. Uh, he says, uh, it's some cocoa leaf. He's like, chew on this. Uh, it will help, uh, adjust, uh, because it's only going to get higher from here uh, we want to keep you on the ground very well to get this bloody headache away and so now i'm feeling great you're feeling great which is perfect should you run into any other trouble um probably won't happen we'll probably just finish the campaign no i think yeah. this is probably the last step <laughs> yeah, this this is, five, uh, <laughs> as they call it in the biz this is the uh, call of cthulhu campaign on very nice hike Right. <laughs> Lovely hike. We're going on a bear hunt. Uh, you travel through the mountains. There's some times where you're almost like uh, the incline is getting steep enough where you're almost putting your hands on the ground, but it's not that bad because just as it starts to get like you have to like climb, climb, it levels out again. Uh, but it's a lot more work and. Uh, you all wish you got a little more sleep the night before. Obviously, the gunshot uh, interrupted what little sleep you were going to get, and the night before was treacherous. Um, and you see it's weighing on Larkin as well, so the, it's a bad mood day overall as well. Uh, and it's so hot during the day and then so cold at night, you all just feel terrible. <laughs> at a certain point, you're going along, and... Everybody give me a listen roll. Mm. Mm. Is my listen. Oh. <gasps> I got a 19 under 50. Ooh, hot nice. success. Ooh, I got a got seven a... under 20. Oh my gracious, I another hard. Heard. Nice, I got, a, I, got a, I got a regular old success, which seems like a, like a certified bummer right about now. Right, it's really, you're a, that's a lower class of success. Mm-hmm. I got a 15 <laughs> under 60. Oh, that's a, is that extreme? Hello. Uh, yeah, that's an extreme success. Wow. I think We're that's exactly extreme, right? From last uh, night. 
the extreme. I mean, extreme the, is a fifth, no, right? So it's yeah, higher than that. It's, it's not a fourth. Yeah, okay. So yeah. it's just hard. three hods and a regular. Um, so <laughs> I would say in games turns, in game turns, uh, everyone snaps their head, and then Vaughn's head slaps, snaps a second later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, goes the other way. Then back. <laughs> yeah, 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 you look the other way. Right. You hear uh, sounds of uh, gunfire, like pop, pop, coming from uh, over a hill in the distance you're you're all sure it's all the all the ones that got hard success maybe vaughn is like where did that come from but all of you like say it's it's coming from the direction of this hill what do you do let's check it out yeah like cautiously oh, I... approach yeah look over the hill Okay, so you you start heading in the direction of this hill, and now you actually have to climb it. So it's not like uh, pickaxe and everything, but like you're on your hands and knees as the elevation gets higher. You get to the top, and you look over the brow, and you see in the distance, maybe like half a mile away, on the other side of this hill, two figures. Uh, it looks like there's a, a, a guy and he's it, he's like taking off his clothes and, and like tearing them. And then there's another person on the ground that looks smaller than him. And he's like, it, it looks like he's doing something to the person on the ground. What do you do? Half a mile away. Whoa. Does anyone have any binoculars? I do. Not, and I regret that I don't. Dang. Uh, let's do let's do a group luck roll to see if it was included in Larkin's uh, supplies. So for a group roll, whoever has the worst luck rolls it. <laughs> oh no, mine's fifty one. Mine's sixty seven. Oh no, I'm sixty four. I got fifty four. Um, I also have fifty one. So is fifty one the lowest? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Oh, last. I put my when we did luck rolls earlier. I put that in my sanity instead of my luck. Whoops! You traitor! You're out of the game. <laughs> no, no, no. I fix that. I fix uh, that. But I think Ross is still the lowest. So Ross, give me that. Fifty one's not bad. Uh, if you roll uh, fifty one or under, I'm going to say you find a pair of binoculars. Kate and I both have it. So, but uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know. We we'll roll, roll to see who rolls. No, I would say you guys can pick. It doesn't matter. I'm, do you not want to roll? I'm fine rolling. Lucky. Do you want to? Okay. Do, do you feel lucky or? I don't. I feel like nothing today. I'm doing good sometimes and doing really bad other times. All right, let's let's <laughs> let's go. That's let's see. Lucky Ross. Uh, okay, here we go, baby. baby. Trying to get under under fifty one. Mm hmm. Oh no. <laughs> So Margo says, "Then we have binoculars, and you start searching through." Rule you know what? That was one of the things he left behind when uh, we can couldn't you fit it on this. Trying to find something, <laughs> like, it's so bad that you <laughs> get a paper cut. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> son of a bitch, that's gonna infect. Rat. Rattlesnakes. Okay, uh, yeah. So that would have been great. I would have totally given it to you. Very smart. I mean, that's the beauty of this game. Hey, do we have a this? Let's see. Um. So we yeah, you'd have to move shot. in closer. Yeah, you're uh, gunshot. We saw, try to... we see somebody tearing off clothes, and yeah. there's somebody on the ground. Maybe he's shot him by accident. Mm. And he's trying to make Sounds like some sort of could be a tourniquet situation. Yeah. Sounds like first aid. Maybe. Maybe. Um, Do we see anything else concerning? You look, and, and and no other figures except for these two. I mean, it's just very. It's like a western. You see this. So far in the distance, they're just uh, dots, but you, you definitely see two people. I'll try to stealth my way down there. Okay. Yeah. Great. Why not? You want to go either. ahead and use a stealth roll? Yeah. Because either they're the ones following us, mm -hmm. in which case we need to address the situation, or they're here, unrelated, and they've seen something, or maybe not. Yeah, either way, is... we should probably go see what it is. This is really bad. Uh, I had a, I had a forty stealth, uh, and I rolled a ninety-one. <gasps> Jeepers, you guys in your nineties today. Um, so you fail on the stealth roll, and I'll say that well, how that will result is like the the opportunity to to surprise them or get the jump on them or or is not is no longer available to you. Um, 
So maybe you look down and you look at the ground. You're like, there's no way we're going to be able to sneak. So you guys oh, okay. were just. But we head. can proceed faster. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's just let's just go. All Whoa, right. So wow. you just keep going. You keep going. And as you get close enough where they see, where you can see them, but they haven't really turned their attention to you. It looks like a uh, uh, there's a guy, and he he he's like ripping his shirt apart to apply it to uh, a young man who's lying on the ground and it looks like there's blood all over uh, the man's hands and and maybe yeah he's like trying to uh, bandage uh, this young man up but as you get close the guy's like panicking and since you didn't stealth he like hears you coming and he just quickly grabs a rifle and like points it on you and then he sees Vaughn and Carter and just and says something in Spanish and Jackson comes up and he's like he says stand back Kari Siri (gasps) and you see the young man laying on the ground looks very similar to the man holding the rifle he has a gaping hole on his chest that is leaking blood and we'll see you next week. Oh my god. <laughs> you bad Kyle! I wish I knew how to say that in what Spanish. What in Spanish? Yeah. Muerte! Muerte! Alto. <laughs>